Paris Accord would undermine our economy, hamstring our workers, weaken our sovereignty, impose unacceptable legal risk, and put us at a permanent disadvantage to the other countries of the world. I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris. Dropping out of the Paris Climate Accord to help out our workers and our economy. But President Trump's critics say the opposite will happen. So who is right? Hi, everybody. I'm Dagan McDowell. This is Bulls and Bears. The Bulls and Bears this week, Gary B. Smith, Jonas Max Ferris, John Layfield, along with Lee Carter and Julie Alvin. Welcome to everybody. Gary B., what impact will withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord have on American jobs? Uh, Dagan, as Trump would say, it'd be hugely positive. Hugely. <laughs> Look, this is just the kind of liberal boondoggle that we elected President Trump to get us out of. Look, this was all, as they used to say in my day, sleeves out of the vest. By that, I mean the other, other countries gave up nothing. China said, oh, we're going to reduce our emissions in 2030. Just when we would have estimated, even without the Paris Accord, they reduce emissions. Pakistan said they're going to reduce emissions to the fullest extent possible, which means nothing. Okay, so those countries gave up nothing, and the Paris Accord is fine if we gave up nothing. We didn't. We are pledged to spend $100 billion a year. Dagan, think what $100 billion could be for jobs around here. My gosh, you could build a wall. You could fund the next 1,000 Teslas. You could give the money back to the citizens of the United States and the corporations so they could come up with innovative technologies. President Trump is right to do this. It was some liberal vacation for Europe and everyone else. It hurt us. He's doing the right thing. John, will it be good withdrawing from this climate agreement, good for jobs here in the States? I don't think either side really is is right in this. I don't think it's necessarily going to be good for jobs, and I don't think staying in it was going to be necessarily uh, bad for jobs uh, either. I, I think both sides have overstated the importance of this uh, climate uh, accord in, in Paris. you got to understand, since 2008, we've tripled our capacity of renewable energy. We have renewable energy jobs are growing at 12 times the rate of the normal economy and there's two and a half more more jobs to one job than in renewable energy than there are in fossil fuels right now companies are already doing this greenhouse gas emissions were at a 25 year low in 2016 and you're seeing co2 emissions have dropped 16 to 18 percent in the same time period so th the trend is going to continue renewable energy creates a ton of jobs and good paying jobs that trend is going to continue which is good for the climate well, you just made the, the case for not being in the Paris Climate Agreement. And in fact, John, we didn't enforce under President Bush the Kyoto Pact from 1997, and you still had a collapse in emissions and a rise in green jobs in this country. Lee, what do you say? Look, I think that, first of all, this is a Donald Trump move. He gave a populist speech in, his, in, in, in the Rose Garden. This is exactly what he promised the American people he was going to do. My concern about jobs is that this is going to be a distraction from the agenda. So he's losing any good faith that he had left with the left, which was not much at all. A lot of fence sitters now are going away from him, running away from him. He had Elon Musk resign. And we've got a lot of people now saying, look, this is enough is enough. And what my, my fear is that they're not going to now compromise on tax reform, that they're not going to compromise on health care. And I think tax reform is the key to eco economic growth and but, jobs. But Julie, if you look at a recent poll that government spending, Russian meddling and the economy were all more important issues than climate change. I think that's frankly short-sighted. I understand that all of those things are really immediate concerns when it comes to, you know, the safety and, you know, the prosperity of our country. But climate change is something that is crucial. It's something that impacts every single one of us. And I think that something like this, withdrawing from the Paris Accords, I think it's ultimately going to be bad for American jobs because, yes, things are moving in this direction of renewable energy, but so much of what happens when it comes to an accord like this, it's about peer pressure. And it's about all of these countries are in it. We're all going to, you know, make our individual contributions and we're all going to figure figure out ways to help climate change. And that incentivizes American companies to find new ways to invest in renewable fuels. And you know, when you see the people who are in charge of Tesla, who are in charge of GE, who are in charge of Goldman Sachs saying that by 
you know, removing ourselves from the climate accord, we are going to be ceding those jobs of technology and renewable energy to other countries overseas. That is not going to help us, you know, as a as a superpower. I think that's going to allow China to say, oh, we're leading this charge now. And that's the last thing that we want to do. But we can lead it without being in the pact, Jonas. So you have Apple, just as an example, Apple, Walmart, Facebook, all increasing their use of renewable energy. Apple's new campus, 100% renewable energy without being in some global climate agreement. Apple's new building doesn't make any economic sense. It's super cool, but they have cash to burn, and it's a multi-billion dollar company headquarters, and it's cool, but it's not, as, as most environmental things are, not economically feasible, which gets to the problem with this thing. Getting out of it's not going to hurt us because it was such a toothless agreement in the first place. If you got this many countries involved in something and they're all in agreement, it's probably not going to do anything. If this doesn't cause a recession in the United States and China, it's not strong enough to help the environment. You're talking about a need to curb consumption in, in American China, not spend more on alternatives. It doesn't tax consumption. It doesn't cut income to offset that raising. It's not going to do anything. The bottom line is, and on these jobs, there's a lot of it, solar jobs, like we just heard from John, because it's such an inefficient way to make power. When you compare the amount of people working in solar compared to gas-powered plants or nuclear or coal, it's absurdly high because you have to put the panels all over and all this. It's not an economically efficient way to make energy. And it doesn't deal with the core problem, which is over-consuming energy and, and the negative output. So it's wrong on so many fronts. Well, it, Gary B., if you look at this, cli this climate agreement, it would, to meet the emissions targets that President Obama put into place, you would have to essentially cripple with regulation and potentially taxes whole industries, steel, farmers in this country, cattle ranchers in this country. That's not a job creator. And add in coal, uh, Dagan. Look, I, I will give credit to our guest, Julie, for raising my already high blood pressure to <laughs> astronomical levels. Look, this kumbaya little speech that I just heard was unbelievable. Look, even if everything went right with this accord, we would lower the temperature on the Earth by two tenths of a degree Celsius by the year 2100. That's based on current computer models, which have been wrong. But I don't want to get down into that. Look, let's just say charitably we don't know what's going to happen. So fine, if China wants to take the lead, and we, oh yes, and we definitely can trust China to take the lead on this, just like North Korea will probably take the lead also. What we know for a fact, Dagan, is two things. One, it's going to hurt jobs around here. And two, not to belabor my earlier point, $100 billion a year in hard cash going from the U.S. out of the U.S. That's money we can use, and instead we spend it on some hocus-pocus thing that's unproven. It just galls me. I give credit to Julie for that, for getting me all hyped up. Julie, <laughs> I'll let you respond. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I understand some of your concerns. Right now, honestly, what I am most concerned about is the fact that uh, you know, readers of Bustle, where I work, are going to be the ones especially impacted by this. We're millennial women, and we're the ones that, you know, when we're 50 and we're 70, we're going to be dealing with the impact of flooding and food shortages and disease. But we're also going to be dealing with the impact of the fact that we no longer have these governmental regulations in place that are going to incentivize us to innovate. And not only are we going to be dealing with the effects of climate change, we're going to be dealing with the effects of a market that is behind the global economy. Gary, you know what's yeah, an incentive? You know what's an incentive to innovate and actually produce clean burning, inexpensive energy is a thriving economy and so if you have a climate exactly. agreement and it's, it's and it's profit stakeing why do you think the fracking and natural gas industries took off because people found out they could make money there lowering emissions was a byproduct of that that's what happens when you have a growing economy people have an incentive to make money thanks guys Cavuto in business about 20 minutes from now Neil what have you got Hey, Dag, it seems the mainstream media is rushing all the time to judge President Trump on climate change, on Russia. But where is the rush to judge the positive news that's happening? A fair and balanced report. And don't look now, but there is a new push to make health care free by taxing just about everything else. Find out where. See you soon. Thanks, Neil. We can't wait. But coming up, why someone here is saying the biggest threat to President Trump's tax cuts is not distractions from intel leakers, but from GOP lawmakers. They'll explain next.